Hey, hello everybody. This is the second part of Evolution versus Creation. The untold story of creation. Billions of people have read or heard what the Bible says about the beginning of the universe. The 3,500 year old account starts with the well known statement In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Many people, however, are unaware of the fact that Christendom's leaders, including the so called creationists and the fundam fundamentalists, have spun the Bible account of creation into numerous tales that deviate from what the Bible really says. These interpretations fly in the face of scientific fact. Even though the, those tales are not found in the Bible, they have caused some people to dismiss the Bible account as miracle allegory. The real Bible story of creation has gone largely unnoticed. This is a shame, for the Bible actually presents a very logical and credible explanation of the beginning of the universe. What is more, the explanation harmonizes with scientific discovery, yes, you might be pleasantly surprised by the Bible's untold story of creation. The uncreated creator, the Bible account creation hinges on the fact that there is a superior, supreme being, Almighty God who creates all things. <clears throat> who is he? And what is his nature? The Bible reveals that he is quite different from the deities found in popular culture and mainstream religion. He is the creator of all things, but most people know very little about him. God is a person, an individual. He is not a bug force, devoid of personality, floating aim aimlessly throughout the universe. He has thoughts, feelings, and goals. God has infinite power and wisdom. This explains the complex design found anywhere in the creation, especially in living things. God created all physical matter, hence he cannot be made of physical elements that he himself has created. Rather, he is of a spiritual and or non-physical nature. God's existence is not limited by time. He has always existed and will always exist. Hence, no one created him. <clears throat> God has a personal name, which is used thousands of times in the Bible. Thy name is Yahweh or Yehovah. Yahweh God loves and cares for humans. How long did God take to create the universe? The Bible states that God created the heavens and the earth. This broad statement, however, makes no reference to the length of time involved in creating the universe or, do, or to the methods he used to shape it. What about the widespread creationists believe that God created the universe in six literal 24-hour days? This concept widely rejected by scientists is based on a gross misunderstanding of the Bible account. Consider what the Bible really says. The Bible does not support fundamentalists and creationists who claim that, they, that the creative days were literal 24-hour days. The Bible frequently uses the term day to designate various periods of times. In some cases, these periods of, are of the unspecified length. The account of creation found in the Bible book of Genesis is one example of this. In the Bible account, each of these of the six created days could have lasted for thousands of years. God had already created the universe, including a lifeless planet Earth. By the time the first creative day began, evidently the six creative days were long periods of during which Yahweh God prepared the earth for human habitation. The Bible account of creation does not conflict with scientific conclusions about the age of the universe. Did God use evolution? Many who do not believe in the Bible embrace the theory that the living things emerge from lifeless chemicals through unknown and mindless processes. Supposedly, at some point, a bacteria-like self-replicating organism arose, gradually branching out into all the species that exist today. This would imply that ultimately the mind bogglingly complex human actually evolved from bacteria. The theory of evolution is also embraced by many who claim to accept the Bible as the word of God. They believe that God produced the first burst of light on the earth by the simply monitor and perhaps steer it the process of evolution. That, however, is not what the Bible says. <clears throat> the Bible account of creation 
does not conflict with the scientific observation the variations occur within a kind. According to the Bible, Yahweh God created all the basic kinds of plant and animal life, as well as perfect men and women who were capable of self-awareness, love, wisdom, and justice. The kinds of animals and plants created by God have obviously undergone changes and have produced variations of within the kinds. In many cases, the resulting life forms are remarkably different from one another. The Bible account of creation does not conflict with the scientific observation that variations occur within a kind. A creator perceived in creation in the mid 1800s. British biologist Alfred Russell Wallace agreed with Charles Darwin on the theory of evolution by natural selection. But even this renewal evolutionist is said to have stated, for those who, who have eyes to see and minds and costumes to reflect, in the minute cells, in the blood, in the whole earth, and throughout the stellar universe, there is intelligence and conscious direction. In a world, there is a mind. Almost 2,000 years before Wallace, the Bible had already observed, for God's invisible qualities are clearly seen from the world creation onward, because they are perceived by things made, even his eternal power and Godship, Romans 1 and 20. From time to time, you might want to take a moment to reflect on the marvelous complicities found in nature, from a single blade of grass to the countless heavenly bodies. By examining creation, you can perceive the Creator. But if there is a loving God who creates all things, you must ask, why He permits suffering? Has He abandoned His early creation? What does the future hold? The Bible contains many other untold histories. Truths that have been buried under human ideas and religious agendas and therefore hidden from most people. <clears throat> the publishers of this magazine would be happy in examining adul unadulterated Bible truth and learn from about the creator and the future of his human creation. So let's check, check it out. The timeline of creation. The beginning, the material heavens and earth are created. Genesis 1st and 11, uh, 1 and 1. Darkness, the earth is formless, desolate, and dark. Genesis 1st and 2. First day, diffuse light evidently penetrates the earth's atmosphere. If there had been any observer on the surface of the earth, the sources of the light would have been imperceptible to him. Yet the difference between night and day became discernible. Genesis 1, 3 to 5. Second day, the earth is covered with water and a dense mantle of vapor. These two elements are separated, creating a gap between the watery surface and the canopy of, va of vapor. The Bible describes this space as an expanse between the waters and calls it heaven. Genesis 1, 6, 8. Third day, surface water subsides and dry ground appears. The atmosphere clears up to the low more sunlight to research the ground. Some vegetation appears, the new species are sprouting through the third and subsequently create days. Genesis 1, 9, 13. Fourth day, the sun and moon became discernible from the air surface. Genesis 1, 14. Fifth day, God creates underwater creatures and flying creatures in great numbers with the ability to procreate with their kinds. Genesis 1, 20, 23. Sixth day, land animals are created both large and small. The sixth day culminates with a master a masterpiece of God's physical creation, the first human couple, Genesis 1, 24, 31st. So this is the second part <coughs> of the evolution creation. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to talk about the third part. Thank you.